All right, let's take a look at for each loops. Now, for each loops are um, basically a simpler version of a for loop when you're just wanting to access each item that's in an array or a list. Um, now, if you want to do more complicated things, these loops are not the way to go. Um, if you're trying to modify the array or the list, if you're trying to, if you need to keep track of the index, this is not going to do that for you. Um, if you're trying to loop through it backwards or you know, kind of hop around, this is not going to do that. This is, this is going to just take one after the other from the start to the finish, which usually that's what we're trying to do anyway. So these come up a lot. Um, if you're trying to compare two arrays, this will not work. So um, the reason I'm showing you all the times they don't work is because usually they will. Um, usually these for each loops are all that we need. Um, any of you that took CS1 and learned Python, pretty much all of the loops that we did are technically for each loops. So let me show you how these loops work. So this header is way, way, way different than what we're used to. Instead of declaring an iterator, what we do is we declare um, a name of the thing, of the element that we're going to be grabbing. So instead of having an index, um, this is actually going to be the name of the element in the list. Um, so if I have an array called names or a list called names, then what this is going to do is it's going to grab the very first thing in my array and it's going to call it name. So I can do whatever I want with name. I can print it, I can add it to something, but all I have is this element in my list. And then the next time through, name becomes the next thing. Um, so as I go through, this is no longer my index, it's actually the thing in my list. It's the element in my list that I'm interested in. So the reason these are called for each loops, if I want to read this out loud, I would say for each string name in names. For each string name in names. And here, all I'm doing is I'm printing out each one. So let's take a look at a few of these real quick. Um, so, I've got two arrays here. I've got um, nums and I have string array. Okay. So this would be old school. This is me looping through my array using this um, this iterator, this this uh, variable that basically just tracks the index. And so to access it, I have to say which array that I'm dealing with and what location, what index. But this does the same exact thing, and it's a little easier to read. So for each string, stir in string array, print stir. So the first time I go through, stir is going to be who, and then stir is going to be let, and so on. So it takes the values of the elements in the list rather than the indices. Again, if you've uh, done for loops in Python, this should be very familiar to you. Um, so this is another one, but I'm going to loop through nums this time. So for each int num in nums, add num to sum. <laughs> um, instead of having to do something like nums a. Um, so you never have to write your loops this way, but you will see them as um, multiple choice questions on the exam. And a lot of times on the free response, you'll see these in the uh, ideal solution, uh, just because they're sometimes a little easier to read. Here's one final example. For each string stir in string array, if stir contains O, then print stir. 
So here, you know, we're not accessing every element. We're, I mean, we're, we're going through each element, but we're not printing each element. We can still put a condition on what we're doing. So these are for each loops. You never have to use these if you don't want, but you need to be able to read them. And sometimes they're um, an easier way to do what you would be doing otherwise.